In this video, we are going to be talking about a condition known as SEPA, which stands for Congenital Insensitivity to Pain with Anhydrosis. However, before we can go straight into talking about SEPA, we must first learn about the basic components of the nervous system and how pain works. The nervous system is made up of the brain, cranial nerves, the spinal cord, nerve cells, and sensory receptors. All of these components are connected by nerve fibers. Nerves send signal to the spinal cord, which then sends the signal to the brain. For example, if you got a paper cut on your thumb, the nerve cells in your thumb will pass the message on to the spinal cord, where it will then go to the brain. You don't actually feel the paper cut until the signal gets sent to the brain and the brain registers it as pain. This means that these signals travel very, very fast. Nerve impulses start at the receptor, which is a specialized part of each nerve where the electrical impulses begin. Your peripheral nerves are important to feeling pain because they end in receptors that are sensitive to touch, pressure, and temperature. Some nerves end in nociceptors, which are specific receptors that sense pain immediately and send the pain message through the peripheral nerve to the brain. Nociceptor axons are usually unmyelinated, which means that they are slow. Myelin is an insulin sheet that surrounds the nerves to help with conduction. The more myelin, the faster the conduction of impulses. Now that we've established a basis for our nervous system, let's talk about SEPA. SEPA is an autosomal recessive disorder, meaning that for someone to have the condition, they need a copy of the gene from both parents. SEPA is the inability to feel pain and temperature with anhydrosis, which means the person has a decrease or absence of sweating. This is a condition that people are born with. It cannot be contracted in any way. It is also known as hereditary sensory and autonomic neuropathy type 4. Signs of a child appear very early at birth or during infancy. With proper medical attention and care, the child can grow to adulthood. However, with the inability to sense pain comes lots of repeated injuries, most commonly biting the tongue, lips, or fingers, which could lead to self-amputation because they don't know when to stop. People with SEPA heal very slowly from skin and bone injuries. Additionally, because they are unable to keep themselves cool by sweating, they get extremely high fevers and seizures from high body temperature. Some symptoms include thick, leathery skin on the palm of their hands, misshapen fingers or toenails, patches on the scalp where hair does not grow, and sometimes hyperactivity or emotional instability. When they are younger, they have weak muscle strength, but as they grow older, it becomes close to normal. Currently, scientists are still trying to figure out why this happens, because studies have found that the nerve conduction in people with SEPA is normal, so that means the connection is not getting lost. Some other studies have shown that there is an absence or decrease in nerve fibers, which with the body and brain used to communicate with each other. Without those fibers, pain messages don't make it to the brain because nothing is sending it there. However, this is not enough information to make a conclusion because there's only a handful of people in the world with this condition. It is so rare that scientists aren't able to predict how many people in the population could get it. There is no uniform clinical pattern because some people with SEPA have an intellectual disability while others don't. People with SEPA are also missing a nerve supply in their eccrine glands, which are sweat glands that are located all over the body and are used for body temperature regulation. Because there's a lack of nerves in the sweat glands, there's no way for the body and brain to communicate with each other, which results in anhydrosis. I myself find it very difficult to imagine living a life with no pain, because a life with no pain means that you wouldn't know when to stop. For example, if you have SEPA and you put your hand on a stove, not knowing that it's hot, you will continue to keep your hand on that stove, even though it is harming you. It would make me feel like I have less control over my body because I wouldn't know what I'm feeling, and if I don't know what I'm feeling, then I wouldn't know what I need. If a person who doesn't have SEPA was to go outside on a cold day without a jacket, he or she would know to go back inside to get a jacket, but a person with SEPA wouldn't. They would continue walking outside not actually knowing that it's cold. This is why I feel sympathy towards people with this condition, because despite the fact that they may not feel cold, they themselves would have to remember to always check the temperature before they leave the house, or they would have to ask someone else if the stove is hot. I can't imagine having to constantly check my body for accidental injuries because I wouldn't be able to feel them myself. But this is something people with SEPA have to do every day. They cannot risk having any unknown injuries. Created using Powtoon.